Welcome to The Amanda Effect, where I thrive to inspire, encourage, and uplift you through life's journey. I'm here to help educate you on self-improvement in life's different categories, including family, careers, relationships, mental health, and so much more. So let's get started because I'm excited for you to feel the Amanda effect. Amanda effect with Kofer. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing absolutely fabulous today. How are you? I'm doing. You're doing. Right. Um, nope. I'm going to need a little bit more enthusiasm than that. <laughs> I need, I need more. We should have hit record like a little while ago. And then you would have had all that enthusiasm. You guys, I'm going to, I'm going to start. I'm going to do like a blooper reel. I'm just going to hit record. He's not going to know because he wouldn't. So I'm going to hit record one day and I'm just going to do a whole blooper reel. And I'm going to just surprise him and play it on the podcast. So this should be fun. I actually would know because on my end, it shows, it it says live. when You you can't do anything about it. So that's true. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) But I'm super, super excited for this episode today. I think this is going to be very relatable for everyone, which is always my goal. Uh, This podcast is not just meant for women or just men in their 30s or anything like that. This is meant for everybody. I I truly feel somebody can get something out of this. So for one, Topher, be careful with your coffee today. And two, I really- no ice in it this time. (laughs) I always get my cold brew no ice. I just always ask for light ice, but we'll continue. We'll digress. (laughs) I really appreciate all of you guys supporting the first video episode. Um, The feedback has been amazing. I encourage you to keep watching, keep giving us feedback and showing us love and sending us any ideas that you have. So today, I felt like it was very important to talk about before we end this crazy year 2020 about adaptability, adaptability. I can talk y'all adaptability um, because this, this year has been nothing but a big fat, how well can you adapt test as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> you agree or disagree, not, sir. That's not, where, that's not where I thought you were going with that, but I'm glad you kept it G rated. I'm not sure what exactly where he's going with that. But <laughs> I don't know what well, I, I, I I thought you might have said like a PG thirteen word or something in there. When you said a big fat, I was like, I don't know where oh, that is oh. going. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> no, not today at least. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can tell yeah. he has a toddler. He's like a PG thirteen word. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, but before we get started, I absolutely um we're going to take a moment of silence and respect for a couple of young ladies that we lost this week um, here in Stark County. Both of them went to Kent City Schools. One of them graduated with me um, from McKinley High School in 08. Um, her name is Misha Davis. Um, the other young lady's name is Ray Jade. I know that she went to school with my husband. I believe that she was a year behind him. Um, so we're just going to take like 30 seconds and just pause for them because I really want to pay respects because uh, when somebody close to your age, somebody you went to school with and was so young passes away, it kind of does something. So I definitely want to give respects to them. Thank you very much for joining me, Topher, in that moment of silence, and I hope you all did as well, and please keep their family in your prayers um, as much as possible, because both of them were definitely unexpected passings. Now, moving on to that, um, segueing into our adaptability conversation, which I think this year a lot of people have lost, multiple people for the most part, and um, we've had... Adjusting to death is not ever easy. I don't think it's something you get over. I think it's only something that you adapt to. You adapt to your life um, with them not being in it. So that's uh, that's always a rough road, long road. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very, this. very rough road. <laughs> And I think people try to rush it um, mostly because that it's the probably one of the most uncomfortable feelings that you can have. Because it's almost like, it, you know, you feel like it's not real. Um, if you guys haven't oh, yeah. listened to um, 
Good and Grief, uh, one of my earlier podcast episodes. I really, really suggest you go back and listen to that, especially if you knew either one of these ladies and you find this death hitting you a little harder or if you lost somebody close to you this year, uh, do that. Um, I made that uh, episode not too long after we lost my grandfather and I talked a lot about my miscarriage and just how those sort of things, uh, how you have to adjust uh, to those unforeseen circumstances. Actually, I made that episode before I lost my grandfather and it was shortly after I made that, that he passed and it was like really sudden. So I didn't really think when I was creating that, that I would need it so soon. So God works in mysterious ways, y'all. <laughs> but um, yeah, so definitely go back and listen to that or ask me about it. Um, I can send you a link if you want. So just because I like to make sure people understand things, I love definitions because I think facts are important. <laughs> so the definition of being a, a adapt, adaptability, being adaptable is the quality of being able to adjust to a new condition. Your circumstances have changed, so you have to adjust to it. It's all being adaptable means. That doesn't mean it's easy. And it doesn't come easy for all people. Um, I definitely know that this is a muscle that I had to work on and strengthen. I know so many people do not like change. And I I am one of those people, but I'm, I'm learning how to embrace the change more to see the silver lining and change a lot more than I ever have. Uh, Topher, how are you usually with? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Except I'm not changing to an iPhone. Um, <laughs> if anybody has ever heard me talk about um, Apple and Android, I'm Android don't all day. Don't listen to her. Don't, don't listen to her. I can't, you guys. I absolutely can't. I will not adapt or adjust to anything Apple. I'm going to complain all the way if I ever have to, for whatever reason, something happens and I have to have one. It's just, it's not going to be pretty. I don't like them. Well, and luckily, you that. live in America and you don't have to, okay? <sighs> I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> How well do you adapt? Um, I think it just kind of depends on what it is. Um, usually, that's fair. I am, like, if it's for this year, for an example, um, there have been like moments where I've just had to roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. And there have been moments to where I will fight like no other to stand my ground on what I believe in to where I, I'm just not willing to budge on changing. Um, but for the larger like scale of things, I can just roll with the punches um, because I, it's just kind of how like I grew up. I mean, like we moved a lot, so Mm -hmm. something was always different um and so i just kind of feel like you don't really have a choice but to kind of go with the flow sometimes yeah. um especially when like it's a big thing like that um you just kind of have to especially when it's not only you that is affected agreed um i think it's, it's important to point out that uh adaptability comes in terms of things that you cannot control so I feel like there are certain things that you absolutely control. Like you're like, no, I'm not changing. Like, for instance, I can control whether I use an Apple product or an Android product. So those things are fine. Like I'm allowed to choose that. <clears throat> but I didn't choose to have the world shut down. I didn't choose to have schools shut down. So I, had, I, couldn't, I couldn't control that. So I had to adjust and adapt to that. I know y'all sick of this term, new normal. Um, because <laughs> I guess if it's new, it's not normal, but anyways, it, uh, so yeah, th those are just, I, I definitely like to point that out. Cause I don't want people to think that they have to adapt to things that they absolutely have a choice about. Um, I think a lot yeah. of people think like, uh, I don't know why this just came to mind. Um, this is not geared towards anybody, nor does it, I, I know anybody close to me, but like if somebody say they get kidnapped or they get tied up in um, human trafficking. No, they can't. Listen, I, I'm going, I'm going through all of this. So um, they didn't choose that, right? So they feel like they have to, you know, adapt or die, correct? And in a way that they correct. do, 
However, I, I think it's very important as much as possible as they can. I know there's so much more that goes into it, the mental brainwash, the drug abuse that they are forced to endure, um, that there comes a point where they're going to feel like, no, like something has to, you know, something has to change. I, I don't have to like be in this forever sort of thing. So I, I think that it's important to adapt for survival, but also a difference of knowing like, okay, but always look for the open way out. So there's so many different avenues of things that can go down, but specifically today- I watch too many movies. So if anybody feel like they are on the verge of being kidnapped, just call me. I'll help you put together a plan. Hey, listen, <laughs> I do it real quick. Topher is like a CIA on the side, like for real. He's a private investigator, y'all. I was like, man, don't don't everybody come for me. I got, I got a secret weapon. <laughs> I, I that's what I always said that you know when I get old and maybe retire that I just will finally like tap into just or be a PI just be a PI mm -hmm. I ain't getting uh, shot for nobody though just to be clear I ain't I ain't taking no bullets but I will help you find whoever you need point, to find the whole point of the PI is to not be seen right yeah until somebody oh maybe find you and bullets don't have eyeballs so i'm just i'm not getting shot for nobody i'm just yeah. making that clear we still far on topic okay <laughs> how we got on toe for being shot but here we go <laughs> my bad i'm just just oh you know. my gosh so what's the biggest thing you had to adapt to this year at uh, regarding the pandemic um i think for me, it was, well, I would say two things. One is working from home. Um, and then because I am not used to, I am like an introvert, but a extrovert, if that makes any sense. 100%. Like, I enjoy being, being around people, Your um, people. especially like, a, and like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not everybody, but <laughs> I enjoy like being in a work environment to where like if I need to take a pause or something like I can go like chat with somebody in their office or something real quick yeah. or like if I have a question about something I don't need to like send an email or make a phone call like I'm used to having people accessible to me within the matter of seconds and like now with my new job I don't have that. So like right. I work from home and so like that's been an adjustment. And then if I have a question about something or if I want to talk to someone about something further, I have to send an email or send a text and then wait for a response um, or just try to figure it out on my own. And other than that, I would say like at the beginning when um, the salon shut down and my wife was actually home every single day, like salon shut down, daycare shut down, and I, at that point in time, I still went to work every day. And so I didn't understand like where she was at mentally with being at home, knowing that like her business is like, just yeah. like no answers, no nothing. And also being at home with a toddler when you're not used to being a stay at home parent is a lot. And so like, to me, it just, it threw me off completely. And like, mm -hmm. I would come home some days and I'd be like, what in the heck did I walk into? And like, <laughs> my child is running around screaming. My wife is like, what in the world? <laughs> and so like, that was like an adjustment for me because it, it's not what I was used to. So right. I was like, okay, this is like, we just, we have to figure it out. And I mean, we managed and it was good by the end, but I also didn't, like see the importance of like knowing when you have a life partner to be like, Hey, like, where are you at in this as well? Because right. my life technically at that time was still normal. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's not as uh, similar, but like in a way like that kind of how me and my husband was like my business, my job didn't shut down all the way, but I definitely, um, my hours decreased a little bit, but then after a minute, they actually, increased uh i used to work at a hotel and 
quick backstory. I had was wanting to leave the current job that I was at and they just happened to want me back. The position opened up in the morning because I was working midnights for them like before I left there. And I was just on like occasional if they needed, you know, help. So they were like, can you come back full time? Like, <laughs> can we just, can we just have you back? Because they knew that I was upset with my current job that I was working at. And so they brought me back and literally, I don't even think I was there a whole week. I didn't get a paycheck. That's when they shut everything down and they made them lay a bunch of people mm. off. So had I gotten laid off, I wouldn't have got unemployment because I did not receive a paycheck for them yet. So that was, that was going to be really tricky. So he fought to keep me on. So I stayed on and it really worked out. They actually made like a room for my kids to come to because of course they shut down school. But my husband, he got busier when the pandemic hit. And I, we, we've always said, you know, I felt, we feel weird about, you know, I want to say making a profit off of a pandemic, but he does mobile stink. It's so wild. It is. It is. It's, it's a very, like, you definitely feel blessed, but you're definitely humbled too, to be like, you know, I'm good. You know, I don't rub in people's faces because there's so many people that were like really, really hurt and affected by this. I'm not about to run around happy, not, but at the same time, I'm not going to not give God his glory. Right. So he got, he got busier because he runs a mobile steam cleaning company. The steam that he uses at the temperature kills, you know, germs, bacteria, and some viruses. So and he's mobile. So these people didn't have to leave their house. They didn't have to go anywhere. So it really, it, it worked out a lot for him and us. So it got to the point where he was so busy that I had to start working with him. And so I, I decreased my hours at the hotel and then I decided to do a bunch of other stuff. And that's how I started my podcast. That's how I started my business and everything else. Um, but the biggest thing, the hugest adjustment that I had to make was becoming a teacher. Like I'm always my kids' teacher. I'm always there to help them. But to like, I feel like I had to like start from scratch, like teaching things and help explain things more than I ever had that they hadn't learned yet. And my daughter, my daughter used to get so mad at me because she would be doing her math. Y'all, fifth grade math almost took me out. Um <laughs> <laughs> it was, took me out. I know y'all feel me. There, no, listen, there are parents out there who feel me. I'm not ashamed. We learned it. We did our part. I don't use it on a regular basis, so it's not there anymore, okay? Um. So my daughter, I would literally look at her and be like, baby girl, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> she was like, I don't like when you say that. And I was like, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> because I did it. I did not know how to help her. I'd be like, your guess is as good as mine, baby. You probably, you've seen it before. I don't remember. I seen this over 10 years ago. Oh, it's been way longer than that, but still. I was going to say, I mean, it would be longer than 10 years. <laughs> but still any math would have been over 10 years ago, but yeah. So that, that was like my biggest adjustment. And then just not having places for my kids to go. Um, yeah. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. My my son loves to be outside. My daughter doesn't like the heat, but she absolutely will go outside. She's 11, y'all. She's like in preteen years. So her room is her best friend. Me and my husband are always trying to pull her out of her room. But she, um, I think they do. There's they, nothing wrong without not caring to go outside. No, there's not. But I just like to make sure she's still doing effective things. But she's a good kid. She's not up in there listening to sad music. She's usually watching dance and cooking shows. She's really an old lady, y'all. So, <laughs> I swear, I swear that's what she watches. <laughs> but, There's I know. Nothing wrong. Could be worse, right? Could be worse. <laughs> that is true. That is all the way true. But yeah. I think after after initial shocks, I think we all went through this very rough transitional period. And then every time we thought we had something, you know, handled, they switched and changed something. What they understood about it. What they say that they adjusted, you know, stay at home order, but really nothing was adjusted. But so it, it was always something on the lines of that. But I think the beauty that came out of that was that my kids learned something that I may not have intentionally taught them because I wasn't great at it, which is adapting to situations that we can't control. My son, he's six, y'all, okay? And he usually gets over things quickly. He is a comedian, y'all. So if, <laughs> if you ever get a chance to listen to anything that this kid has to say or a conversation between him and Amanda, <laughs> please, please do it. It is the 
funniest thing I have heard in a while. Listen, that that's my baby. That's my little Gemini. I call him my little soulmate. Mostly because I don't know, he knows me in and out and he knows how to push the buttons, but also how to soften the buttons right back up in like in milliseconds of each other. You all like I can't stand him, but I just love him. <laughs> but so he's sick, he gets over things fairly quickly. You know, that's just how the kid mind works. I mean, I'm sure that Riker's the same way. They're just like, oh, I'm really, really mad about this. Okay, cool. So what's for lunch? Like, <laughs> they just, they, they move on quicker than I think I ever have. But I usually had to have a nap first before I moved on from anything. Not much has changed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. But especially with my daughter, she has a lot of my traits. She may look like her daddy, y'all, but she has a lot of my traits. And we like control. We do. I've talked about it multiple times about me being a recovering troll, recovering control freak. Almost call myself a troll. Um, which is the way my hair looking today a little bit. But oh, so so the I things <laughs> the things we can't control literally cause and heighten our anxiety because oh my gosh, we can't control it now. I've done the work. My daughter is absolutely working with her um, counselor and we're doing work and stuff like that. So this was such an amazing lesson for her to learn. And I've seen such an improvement from her being able to adapt and understand. For instance, when the numbers went up, because I was still taking to my, my kids to the store yeah, maybe once a week with me. Um, but when numbers start to heighten here in Stark County, my kids have been nowhere. Um, I took them on a couple runs with me, but they didn't get out the car. And my daughter was like, man, mommy was like, my head hurts. And I was like, probably because you ain't used to being in a car this long. Literally, it's a five minute drive to school. And then they come home. That's it. That's the only place they go. My babies have not been like gone out somewhere. They've been to my mom's house, but she lives three streets down. So again, that's a one minute drive. <laughs> So I was joking with her like she yells, you used to being in the car this long. They, so they haven't been anywhere. And God bless her heart. She wanted to get uh, Christmas gifts for everybody. Um, so we made, we did make that happen. But so she was very patient and understanding of why, you know, she had to wait. I wanted to make sure we went on a day that I knew wasn't too busy. Make sure we went earlier because those people are out shopping at that time. So and usually she'd whine and pout and, you know, be dramatic. Nobody loves me. Like, I'm not important because they're not doing what I want them to do at this very second. And she has that pretty bad. I'm waiting on her to grow out of it. She was the only child for four and a half years. But I feel like it's it's time. It's been six years. Like, she, <laughs> she can grow out of our world only revolving around her, but she ain't letting it go. Um, I but, feel like the older child thing. It's just not something that you grow out of. That's what my older sister said. <laughs> yeah, it's the, just. I'll never understand it. Something. Yep, you just Ooh. won't. It it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that was a beautiful lesson because I don't think I would have intentionally taught her that. Like I always think about. Like, you know, you always talk, hear people talking about their grandpa, like they taught me a lesson, they made us do this, and the lesson was this. I don't hardly ever intentionally teach them lessons in that manner, but I think I, I'm glad that I recognized the lesson and kind of like horned in on it to make sure that this is something that we water and help grow. And she's doing, she's doing amazing. And I'm just, I'm trying to find the blessings and the madness, I guess. So... And being adaptable, like I said, is something I had to work on. Are, did you say you are naturally adaptable or do you think no? I think no. I think I'm not. Um, I believe Aaron is. Do you think Haley is? I think it depends on what it is. Okay. So Aaron definitely is, but Aaron's adaptability comes with him not really giving too much thought and he don't have time to give things his energy. So either he's going to adapt or he's not. And you either adapt to what he's not, what he decided he's not going to do, or you just be mad because <laughs> he's going <laughs> to do it. <laughs> so, but again, a trait that I admire, but drives me crazy. Um, but he, so, so I think that like our kids, we definitely have like one of each and whatever. It's, it's crazy. Y'all. I, I don't know why we decided to like, split our DNA twice, but it's, 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 it's an interesting, 
Because <laughs> that's so, what the world tells you to do. I know. It's crazy. It's just, it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're amazing kids, but I, I, I definitely had to work on that adaptability gene, like uh, not gene, like that muscle. Like my son, he may not have to work on it as much. I might have to pull his back a little bit because he's kind of like his daddy. If he wants to do something, he's going to do it, which is an amazing trait to have. It's just extremely difficult to parent. That's a whole nother podcast. (laughs) We are definitely going to do that one, though. So for me, I had to work on it more and build up that muscle. So I don't want you guys to get discouraged if, like, you know, like, I just can't. Like, it makes me nervous. Like, I don't like things changing and all this, all this, all that. Um, Just think about it. Think about all the older adults who can't stand all the technology changes or how the people who are fussing about these masks and all these mandates, they have never adjusted their adaptability muscle. They've never strengthened it. And we, and like Tover said, I think we all have things that we're easily, more easily adjust the, to than others. Some people adjust to parenting better than others. That doesn't make them a lesser of a parent. That doesn't make them a, you know, the other parent better. It just means this is what we have to do. Some people have things to work on. I talk about this all the time. I wish I was somebody who could hop out of bed and be ready to go for the day. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just not. I need breaks. That doesn't make me lazy. It just makes me me. So again, you, go you, back to that. Mm-hmm. Eat this fluff. <gasps> oh, he got this dog in here. He wouldn't leave him alone, y'all. Go lay down. He's he's a big Saint Bernard. Yeah, uh, he's a horse. He's <laughs> literally a horse. Does he like you to talk about him like that? <laughs> he has feelings no. too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I know if I call my dog fat or chunky, she looks at me like, oh, really? And I'm like, I'm sorry, my bad. You look cute though. <laughs> but, better, we better hope that he doesn't knock this whole set over if he plops down on the name? floor. Tucker? Tucker. Ah, ah. Let me knock this <laughs> over. You can <laughs> knock it over after I hit finish. Don't knock it over now. I promise you, if you do that, I will fluff your ears. <laughs> we'll see if that works you guys we'll keep you updated but, so I'll, so long story short just do that self-evaluation again coming back to that because you'll you'll know what you you know what things you're going to adapt into i'm way better adaptable at work like doing this stuff we have technical difficulties i'm better at adapting and adjusting to this and figuring stuff out than i am if my dinner doesn't come out well so <laughs> It's just one of those things. We definitely have things, you know, more things that were easier adapted to than others. And that's just something you have to figure out, not compare it. Don't compare it. There's no need to compare. There is no comparison to you and any other human being for the simple fact of you are only made like you, period. You guys can have similar. I've been going, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I've been going by this like all year, really since March, is that we all might be in the same body of water but we're not in the same boat Mm. and it's just that it's just something that struck with me earlier in the year um especially just because i like i work in like the financial field and so like i can see people's finances and Mm. i know that you have people who life did not change at all i know that you have people that life got better and then you have people who were already at the bottom and the bottom seemed to get a little bit lower. Um, mm-hmm. And so to me, that's just kind of what I keep reminding myself about this year mm-hmm. is that there's a lot of us who have had great blessings and favor. And then there's some of us who are still just trying to make it. And mm-hmm. we all fear the unknown. And so like, we just have to be willing to know like in this body of water are we really going to continue to try to ride this wave are we going to reach out and ask for somebody else to help us whatever the case might be and that's just that's kind of where my mind has continued to go since march (laughs) i like that i like that a lot i think that it's self-explanatory 
in that manner, even in like how people ride the waves. No wave feels exactly the same in different boats, right? So the waves are going to feel different. You know, at some point, y'all wave pattern may go in sync with other people, but that eventually it's it's going to change. <laughs> so I love that analogy. I'll try and quote you if I remember if I use it on social media, but. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll give you a full <laughs> I'll just text it to you. I'll just text it to you. It's fine. <laughs> I do that to everybody. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna use that, but I'll quote you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so new skills and things I think also come with adaptability. Um, this week has been crazy, good crazy. It was a lot of good crazy, but definitely a test of my faithfulness and how well I can adapt even more this week. Um, I needed to get better internet. I needed to get a new laptop. Um, I was trying to set up my uh, Canon camera so you guys can see me more clearly. And so I learned a lot about technology I didn't care to know. (laughs) (laughs) I did it, y'all. I'm telling you, I promise you, I would have been just fine not knowing any of this. But uh, there was a lot of, a lot of, of my own research that needed to be done. Um, And just with having my own business, that comes with a whole new set of being adaptable because, especially being a small business, because I am what I got. Like I have other people that I can bounce things off of, but at the end, end, Topher about to shout (laughs) y'all. At the end of the day, I'm like, I'm the start and the end. Like this is who I'm dependent on. And, And I'm so blessed to have Aaron as like an example of that because he does that times 10. And I'm just like, like, listen, I get it. So stop depending on him for answers. I had to go out and look and find the answers for myself, knowing who to trust, who not to trust, and getting multiple information before I make a decision and just keep trying. I literally spent like two hours trying to figure out how to get this system to work on my computer. And I thought I was going to need help. And then literally 20 minutes after I'd set up to somebody to talk to them the next day, boop, I found the answer. Y'all, Google is your best friend. but you have to Google the right words to get you. <laughs> so specific. I Google, like I, I wish I could share like my Google history of how I literally rephrased so many things to try and find this answer. But um, so yeah, this year I, I just learned a lot about a lot more about technology systems, storage space. Um, I learned about what an i7 and an i5 and i9s and that sort of thing, and what that means, what it doesn't mean. Fun fact, it really doesn't matter if the number's higher. It just matters which ha- who has the new system and what it does. So do your research. If they say, oh, it's an i5, okay, what year? And then look up what that means because you may need an updated one for what you need. Um, internet. I'm tired of internet. I'm sick of it. Like, I mean, I get it. <laughs> I really need it. But it's not really guaranteed. And trying to figure out upload and download speeds and how many gigs you need, megabytes per second is all the uploads and download speeds is, which confused me because some people call it uploads and download speeds, but it's really the same thing as megabytes per second. And I was confused. I was like, what's that mean? And then I was like, oh, it means the same thing. Y'all, then y'all need to decide on which word y'all going to use. <laughs> But I'm that person. I'm like, I, they was like, let me know if I'm going too fast. I was like, don't worry, I will. I will stop you. Like, ah, ah, wait, I you said a word. I don't know what that means. That's why I like talking to Apple people because they be using all kind of terminology. And I'll be like, huh? I, oh, you don't lost. do us like that. Don't, don't do there. us like that. I lost you. No, like the Apple, like people who like sell Apple. It's like it's just it's frustrating because they want to throw all these system and programs and numbers and sizes at you and you just like bro i just needed to do one like a couple things which one's good for that i don't yeah. think i heard the poor boys feeling that best buy when i went and got my <laughs> mac laptop because okay. well like i've worked in technically i mean i still work in sales and so like mm-hmm. and i understand that you should allow you should respect and allow people to do their job but I was very specific about what I wanted. And Mm -hmm. when someone is very specific about what they want Mm -hmm. and they can tell you what they want, they already know that tells you that they've already done their research. And so for you to like, ask me and question my (laughs) want. (laughs) And he was just like, Oh, 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 yep. Oh, is right, buddy. We can check out now. (laughs) Exactly. No, Aaron will, Aaron don't have it because Aaron's been in sales 
seriously, since I met him, I swear I told y'all, he always has a side hustle going on. But so he knows he can read through the BS. He knows what you're going to try. So he's just like, listen, don't try and sell me anything extra. You know, if you want to tell me about it, okay, cool. But if I say no, it's a no. And to the point where he'll walk away without buying it because he just don't, he doesn't need to be hassled that manner. He was like, I'm okay with them presenting extra information. He was like, but if I tell them no, then I need them just to stick with that because I've already, I'm like, he's like you, I've done my research. I didn't come in here not knowing what I'm talking about. Now, <laughs> little old me will walk in there like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I need like a thing that looks like this to do this, I think. <laughs> they be taking advantage of me, y'all. I, it drives me insane. I always, from the time that I have met Haley until now, I always say that she and her mom are, a, it sounds really bad, but a salesman's wet dream because they will literally buy whatever somebody tells them. Oh, okay. No, I'm not that bad. I will definitely question it. I just don't, I need you to tell me what I need. And I think I trust salespeople that much. As Aaron's like, you are way too trusty. That's the same <laughs> like, thing. That is the same thing. No, but that I'm is not. a waste of money. Yeah, yeah that's so true. <laughs> Over here sipping like, on tea. Got water now. <laughs> my, like my, my mother-in-law, she'll say, oh, well, like I got this, this, and this. Why? <laughs> <laughs> when I found and... out about the internet stuff, because <laughs> my mom let me look at, you know, what she has and everything. And so when I got mine, when I was remembering what she had, I was like, mom, you don't even need all that. It's just you. You do not. She has like a 5G for what? It's just her and a cell phone. She doesn't, she ha uses cable. So she doesn't need Wi-Fi for her cable. I was like, mom, you, you need to lessen your internet. She's like, well, what about if the kids come over with their tablet? It, they'll be a hundred percent fine. Well, what about if, if, you can, if your nephew comes over and they all need to do schoolwork at the same time? I said, mom, that's still only maximum four devices. I swear to you, you won't need that. And what's going to happen? Maybe once a year, if that. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah she doesn't need all that. I, I try to tell her. I let, listen, she grown. I let her make her own decisions. They got you, mommy. They got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. I have new, um, I guess, system information and technical information that I didn't think that I would know. I also have a new, uh, I guess, new tactics on how to communicate better with your kids as far as schoolwork goes and just uh, breaks as many breaks as they need because again I like the honor that my kids are different my daughter she kind of likes to hit the ground running get it all done but at the same time that's not always good for her because then her work towards the end is like it's not as good as the work she started with so I have to make her take a break my son is like every 45 minutes breaking a snack <laughs> he was, he was, oh my god if you say break him he automatically believes that comes with a snack i was like i know they don't do this at school like why are you snacking this much at home <laughs> and if they are tell them to send some home because i'm done with the snack i can't yeah but, no i think that i like that you have i like even like when we were talking i don't know last week or whatever just about the things that you've had to adjust and learn Mm -hmm. And just to make sure that you can fine tune your passion and, you know, and essentially you, your business. And that's just like with me before, like my clothing line, I had cut it off and it was like basically dead to me um, until a few things <laughs> happened this year. And then I had to, I just, I kept talking about it and then finally I was just like, okay, well, like, how am I going to do this? Because right. beforehand, I worked with a graphic designer. And, like, I can create the ideas and things like that, but it just wasn't, like, something that beforehand I made time for. Right. Um, and so, like, it was just easier to pay someone to basically bring my ideas to life instead of, like, what I do now mm -hmm. is basically stay up until the wee hours of the night putting things together and just like kind of bringing my own ideas to life and even like the same way with like my website beforehand i paid someone thousands of dollars to do it this time around i did it myself i mean it took me a while but 
It's we're just, not knocking you know, the Mandela effect paying people to do stuff like that. I'm just saying because I definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, but like for for me, it was just like it's not my how. I shouldn't even say like yeah, but like how I looked at it, it's not my main source of income. And so I was just like, how do I go about this, trying to relaunch this, rebrand this and be the most cost effective? Because you did that during the pandemic. You did that like right in the middle of everything. Yes. So that makes sense. So like when I decided to relaunch this, I think that the salon had been back open for Mm -hmm. maybe a month. Um, I had actually like just switched jobs and went from like a salary employee to a commission only employee and so it was just like um yeah we're gonna do this like we just gotta be smart about it and so you know we just like I said I mean like I just had to sacrifice and prioritize my time and basically just use the brain that God gave me and figured out how to do it um and I must say that I'm pretty darn proud of myself because this is not something that I would have been able to, that I would have thought that I would have been able to do years ago. But I think that when you are passionate about something, every, like God just puts things in place to make them align for you. (laughs) Doesn't he do it? Because I, I have zero passion to run my own business. Just being honest. I didn't ever see myself as being a business woman. But the things that I'm doing, I'm so passionate about, I kind of didn't have a choice. Like (laughs) it was, but he's given me all the skills. He has placed an amazing businessman in my life, which is my husband. And he was, now that's his gift. Um, But it's, it's helping me along the way to the point where I can focus on, you know, the real things that I want to do and the business side doesn't seem as heavy as in my head what I thought it was. But um, I have definitely taught myself and retaught myself a few things in my passion. And I just think that that's absolutely beautiful. And like I said, I had no intentions on learning any of that technical stuff. So just be open guys, just, just, just be open and trusting of God. Because when you, when you surrender, um, somebody just said to me yesterday, uh, when you can fully surrender, that is literally the best. It's cause I always talk about my control when you can fully surrender to God, it's the most powerful position that you can put yourself in because you give him that control. And honestly, when you keep doing it, you're going to know which way he flows and which he does. Uh, God, having a relationship with God literally means that. Think about when you got into a relationship with your spouse, right? You didn't know them, but now you guys kind of just move without knowing. Like there, I'm sure that there are certain things my husband says to me and people are like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, Y'all know he didn't mean like, <laughs> like that's, I know how he meant it. I knew how to take it and vice versa. I tell you all the time, like I feel, I speak aggressively um, because of the passion. And, thug. I'm not, <laughs> we're not going to go there. Not anymore. <laughs> so, so, um, when, I'm like, so you got, but you guys know each other. You don't take offense to things maybe you would have because you just know their personality is different. God is the same way. We got to learn him. The only way to learn somebody is to spend time with them. So I definitely Absolutely. encourage you guys to, to reach your higher power, to learn more about him and find that beauty and the peace and that surrender. And I promise you, things will just start lining up. You'll start being like, how did I even like, do this all I did was pick up a camera or all I did was hit record and then just things just happen it's just about that beauty of knowing when to surrender you know and when to move so I highly suggest that you guys um just kind of I don't know meditate on that think about it and you know make your moves on however it moves you so but yeah think about this everyone I think that there is two things that you can like kind of just correlate with this is one is pop and it's the power of prayer. And the other one is pop and it's the power of faithfulness. Mm. And I just think that with the, with faithfulness comes favor and that mm. mean that could be however you look at it. That is with any relationship that's with the job, that's with your relationship with 
the, with a higher power, with God, but with you being faithful, things will come in fall or fall into place for you. And I just think that that is something that a lot of us kind of forget because we think that we're in control um, or we want to be in control. Um, and just we've this year, if it's taught you anything, is that you have to roll with the punches. You have to be okay with not knowing what's going to be next. Right. Um, and so, and sometimes when you are being faithful or when you are working through that power of prayer, things will just kind of align how they're supposed to align when they are supposed to align, not yeah. when you want them to, it will happen when it's supposed to. Um, so we just kind of have to stick to that. Mm -hmm. And I know that we all get off course, but it's just kind of something that we should kind of keep in the back of our minds. Absolutely. I think being faithful helps that surrender come a whole lot easier. So I'm glad that you, mm -hmm. you pointed that out because you definitely have to have that first because you can't yeah. surrender without faith, y'all, because it's uh, it's it's crazy looking. Robert Madu just, uh, he put something uh, out on Instagram. It was like a short clip of a sermon he did and he was talking about how God is an amazing gift giver, terrible gift rapper. Your gifts are going to show up in like the weirdest ways. He made the example of, you know, if you want to, you want to be able to, you know, you know, God teach me how to trust you more. He's going to give you a year like 2020. So <laughs> guys, that's, it's going to come in like the craziest way. I know you've heard people say this, but you know, you've also heard people say, you know, enjoy your high school years because they're going to go by faster than you think. I found that to be extremely true. Enjoy their kids at this young age that you really think is, you know, hard for you, lack of sleep, because it's going to go by quicker than you think. And I cannot even explain to you guys how true that is. I'm going to make me cry. Y'all, my baby girl, bro. I'm, I've been through, I literally been going through all week. Like, I was like, my baby girl really is growing up over my eyes. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. To the point, I literally, I didn't do it on purpose. I gave people the wrong sizes of my kids because I refuse to see them any bigger than what, like, I want them to be. And my husband and my mom had to get me together. Like, Amanda, your kid, like, especially my son, because that's my baby. So he supposed to stay my baby forever. And so I was giving people the wrong size clothes. And they're like, Amanda, he's not that small. And I'm like, I, I was like, hey, I bet he is. Watch, I'm going to hold it up to him. Y'all, I was wrong. And I literally cried. Like, why is he this big? <laughs> so anyways, that was off topic. But I know that the thing that people say to you is pretty redundant. But it does hold some truth. This many people aren't going to say it if it doesn't hold true, if they haven't been through it, they haven't lived through it. I've told you guys so much of my story and there's still so much that you guys don't know. So there are things that I've been through that I've seen that I had to learn and I'm hard headed. Hi, I'm like president of the hard headed club. I'm going to learn things the hard way. I'm trying to get better at it. I don't even think God even gives me like that grace period anymore. Like, all right, I'm going to see if you get it. I just thank you just hits me over the head off top. Like, he's like, I'm not playing around with you no more, Amanda. You clearly don't get these. <laughs> like, yes, I put them right here. So, um, so yeah, so definitely just, you know, pay attention, pay attention to those things and really, you know, just be great. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, mm -hmm. I want to talk about actually your clothing line because we were supposed to do that last week and we did it and since you brought it up that wonderful shirt he has on is his so go ahead and talk yeah, about it. it is um so i'm actually getting ready to transition these out um but of this course. is actually <laughs> <laughs> Of course. I, I can't stand you. <laughs> um, but no, I I do have a clothing line. Uh, it is Topher Artez Unlimited. Um, and like that's the website, that's the social media handles. And but originally the items that I am actually trans transitioning out are all Ohio based basically and it's just not what I'm passionate about anymore. I know that it's kind of cool, kind of catchy, things like that, but just not kind of what I'm into. And so anything 
everything that is a part of my new line basically has to deal with like a little bit about God, um, a lot about diversity and inclusion, um, mm -hmm. a lot about the importance of self-identity for black men and black women. Um, and uh, I have a blog on there that I also discussed a lot of different things on as well. Um, but it is just, that is my passion besides numbers. Um, and I know I, people think I'm so weird for being passionate about math, but I just am. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I just think that with my line, like I told you guys a little bit ago, I there was a lot of learning and a lot of dedication that I had to do this year, but with it came a lot of faithfulness, surrendering, um, and a lot of grace uh, because <laughs> it was just something that I had to tap back into and be aware that it is a passion of mine. Um, and my identity as a person of color in America is a something that like I love, I embrace, and I just want to be able to let other people be able to to never feel like they have to sacrifice their identity to fit into a world. And so me making items to let them know that, hey, I see you, you are loved, and we're here for you is amazing. Um, because I just think that it's really important for black and brown people to know that the, they literally are some of the greatest people to exist. So I just think that that's a little segue about it. I love that. And that kind of brings me to um, what I want to close on, because I think that something important that I keep seeing this week, and I don't know, it's been on my heart, and I definitely believe I've said it before, but not in this terms about using our gifts. You like, that's where your, your passion is, is, you know, to make sure people get that message. And you're doing that through clothes. And some people may call it, you know, trivial, like it's just clothes. How are you going to send a message through clothes? Like nobody's going to get it. You're not going to impact and stuff like that. Oh, but they will, because that's God that gave you that gift. It's God that gave you that passion. It didn't just come from nowhere. He didn't just decide, hey, I'm going to be passionate about this. And so I think that yeah. that's beautiful. People using their gifts, no matter what it looks like, no matter how big or small people think that it may be, then that's, it's, it's your gift. And God, God gives us gifts to give him glory. God gives us gift to use for what he needs us to use it for. It doesn't matter how many people it's for. It doesn't matter where it's at. It's for a purpose. Just like I, I've, I had to really be confident about my gift of talking and my level of talking. When I talk, people do want to listen, but at the same time, I have to be careful because the passion comes off as aggression. So those things, you are still going to have to work at your gift, which is comes with what we were talking yeah. about and working on your passion. Because although, yes, you have it. Yes, it's natural ability, but that doesn't mean you have to work on it. I always like to use LeBron as an example, just because he's such a beautiful example. LeBron's gift is basketball. But if he just decided to never practice, do you think he'd be where he is today? But I, I do believe LeBron's gift is basketball, but I honestly, truly, I ain't talked to him, though, y'all. So if y'all talk to him, let me know. But I think that his passion really is for, you know, social justice, for the community, because I see him do so much and he's so excited, yeah, excited to do stuff like that. I don't think he does it because, you know, he wants clout or anything like that. This man really does care about where he came from. He, you know, understands what it means to be an inner city kid. And I, I love that he always shows love for his hometown because some people, a lot of people don't do that. Um, when you make it, a lot of people forget where they came from. And that is, that is one of the, I think it's like, it's a really sad thing is that I always look at life that no matter how big or mm -hmm. small you might think your life is, if you get to where you desire to be, you can never forget where you began because the moment that you do is a moment that sometimes God can take it all away. Agreed. And I think from where you began is where you, like where you, where you came from is what made you. Mm -hmm. So it, it had a part in that because without that, you wouldn't be where you were. Um, CJ McCullough, another NBA player, plays for the Trailblazers. He also always gives homage to 
his he every like he so many interviews he always shouting out Canton and where he's from and Ohio and stuff like that. I love that because y'all Ohio against the world. Nothing against my other people, my other state listeners, but <laughs> y'all know people don't like yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know they don't like us. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, we're used to it. But um yeah. I just I love that, you know, people are like, you know, in these bigger name cities doing big things and still stowing homage to where they came from. And my favorite example to use is, you know, using your gift for, you know, that God gave you to reach people is Alex Simon. If you don't know who Alex Simon is, one, Google him. Two, um, he, <laughs> yes, he, he uh, was, he was one of the main, um, it was actors or like drummers, artists and stomp, but they do like the buckets. This man literally plays buckets for a living. He does so many other things. Y'all. He is so like multi-talented. He can tap dance. He does like, it's every time I see him, he's showing off a new talent, but um, essentially his core is that he plays buckets. Now that sounds silly, right? To be like a gift. It sounds very small. And I always just like it as like, you know, the little drummer boy. Because he spreads such a message. Because he, it's, I mean, it's him as a vessel playing the drums. But when you see and hear him playing, that's God. That is, that is God. That is, it, it's, it's something so much bigger than we are. Because there's always a different message. There's always a different feeling. His presence is different than being around other drummers. And that's because he's doing what he can. I remember we, we had a lot of violence going on in the city. And he decided to have a drum circle. He didn't know what else to do. He wanted to do what he could do. So we had a drum circle. We went in downtown Canton and he played the drums to send good vibrations to the city. I don't care what anybody says to me. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. The violence is still there, but it mattered to me. I took my kids down there. We had a great time. It just showed them, do what you can with what you got. What God gave you. There's a reason. It may sound small. It may sound trivial. It may sound silly to most. But my favorite saying, Noah looked crazy until it started to rain. You guys absolutely have got to love and trust yourselves and just really understand. Know you. Knowing you is like the biggest thing because to know yourself is, is to love. You have to know yourself first and then work on loving those parts of you. That's why I really like, I really want you guys to listen to the, um, it's, it's the, uh, What's the name of that episode called, Topher? What's wrong with me? It's the the episode yeah. about <laughs> the self evaluation because I really feel like we gave you guys a lot of key points to hit and really sit and think about in that episode because uh, I hate people to feel small that I know have so much big so much bigger potential inside of them, and I'm guilty of it too, like of downplaying you know my my strength and my gifts. So I, I'm here with you guys. I'm with you. We are doing this journey together. That is the Amanda effect. We are going to be authentic. We're going to be honest. We're going to be our true selves and we are going to be okay. And we're going to be great doing it. And it's okay if we have days that are not okay. All right, cool. But we're not going to let those days stop us to move forward. Those are pauses, not a stop. And I'm here to make we're sure. We're going to put a little pin in it. Yeah, so put a, boop, put a little pin in it. I always feel like they have to make that noise and you put a pin in it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so... I really appreciate you guys for listening today. I hope you got something great out of it. Let us know what you thought. Put your thoughts in the comments here on YouTube or send us a message via Facebook or Instagram. So for any last closing words. Just because it's been something on my mind and you kind of said it, but (laughs) be yourself first and everything else can wait. Yes. What is the, wait, what's the, what's the saying? Be you, the world will adjust, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That one, that one, because your authentic form is more powerful than you guys give it credit for. All right. Yeah. So as always, go forth and be authentic to yourself and others. Have a blessed week, you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. The Amanda Effect is sponsored by Pristine Steamwash of Canton, Ohio. Are you having a hard time finding the time to clean your car? Or how about the furniture that hasn't been cleaned since you bought it? Well, Pristine Steam Wash offers mobile steam cleaning services such as auto detailing, furniture and upholstery, area rugs, restaurant kitchens, 
and general steam cleaning services. For more information and to schedule an appointment, go to www.pristinesteamwash.com or call or text 330-704-6867. Pristine Steam Wash. They don't just clean, they clean with benefits.